Seven months ago, I posted my first best and worst Australian sunscreens video and I'm back seven months later with another sunscreen video. It was not meant to take me this long to come out with a part two to that video, but anyway, things happen. Here I am finally with part two. That video actually went on to do pretty well. I got almost 100,000 views on that, which is by far my most viewed video ever. Amazing. I ended up on Reddit. I'm not a Reddit user, but I know there is a very active skincare community on Reddit and somehow my video ended up there as well. So if you do enjoy this video and you're a Reddit user, I mean, feel free to share this one over there as well if you like. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Razia. I make skincare content here on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm here to help make your skincare decisions a lot easier for you. And I promise there is a lot more sunscreen content to come as well. So make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified of my weekly uploads. And you can check me out on Instagram and TikTok as well. In my first best and worst sunscreen video, I think I reviewed about 20 different sunscreens and I've got another 15 here for you today. The point of these videos is just to make it easier for you to find your ideal sunscreen. As we know, sunscreen is the most important skincare product that we can be applying to our skin and we should be doing so every single day. Fortunately, there are plenty of great sunscreens out there that are comfortable to wear and I'm just here to review all of them for you and help it make it a bit easier for you to decide which ones to try out for yourself. Before we get into the reviews, I'm just going to go over some criteria for these reviews and I'm also just going to go over some general information. I've got timestamps down below, so if you want to skip right ahead, then you can go ahead and do that. So my criteria for a good sunscreen has to be broad spectrum, which means it protects against UVA and UVB rays. Needs to be at least SPF 30, SPF 50 is ideal. Of course, absolutely no white cast whatsoever. Sunscreen has to be accessible for everyone of all skin tones to be able to wear every single day. So no white cast of any kind is acceptable in my eyes. <laughs> No greasiness, no stickiness, no horrible sunscreen smell. It needs to be able to apply easily to the skin with minimal rubbing. There is nothing worse than having to rub and rub at your skin to get a sunscreen to absorb. So absolutely none of that will be tolerated. <laughs> and very importantly, the sunscreen needs to be comfortable to wear at the required amount. So the recommended amount for just the face is a quarter of a teaspoon. And if you're gonna be applying sunscreen to your neck, face and ears, then that's half a teaspoon. All the sunscreens in this video are chemical sunscreens. I think there might be one or two that have some physical filters in them, but it's mixed in with chemical filters. We like chemical filters over here. None of that fear mongering, none of that. Chemical filters are comfortable to wear and they are accessible for all skin tones. And that's very, very important. Same as last time, I'm gonna have video pop-ups on the side showing me apply every single sunscreen. This is just to show you the texture of each, show you how easy it applies, and give you a rough idea of the finish of the sunscreen. For your reference, my skin type is dry acne prone. I like a sunscreen that's moisturizing, hydrating, and leaves my skin with a nice glowy finish and something that won't clog my pores. But I promise in this video, I will have something for all skin types. Oily, combo, dry, everyone, you'll be covered in this video. Okay, that's enough blabbing. Let's get on with the reviews. I'm gonna start from my least favorite to my most favorite. Starting with the Cetaphil Sun Ultra Light Lotion SPF 50 Plus. In my previous sunscreen video, I did test out a Cetaphil sunscreen and that one also ended up at the bottom of the list. And I got a few comments telling me to try out another Cetaphil sunscreen. If it was this one, this one is also horrible. I mean, it does have titanium dioxide in there mixed in with a bunch of other chemical filters. But that titanium dioxide, man, is really not the best. <laughs> it left me looking blue, basically. So this one was not great. Also, it's very thick. It's got that greasy texture to it. It's supposed to be ultra light and it's supposed to be good for oily skin. Um, no, absolutely not to any of those things. <laughs> I did take the time and the effort to try and rub this one in. It was not budging. It wasn't going anywhere. So again, Cetaphil ends up at the bottom of the list. And honestly, I don't think I ever want to try another Cetaphil sunscreen ever again. The next one that's down at the bottom of the list is this one here from Everyday Human. This is their Resting Beach Face SPF 30 Sunscreen Serum. This one is called a sunscreen serum and that's very true to the name. It is very lightweight as you can see here. It has a very thin texture. It has a peppermint, pepperminty smell and that is why it's at the towards the bottom of the list. 
This one is scented with natural fragrance. I used this once and my eyelids were left inflamed. The skin around my mouth area, which if you've seen my previous videos, you know is an area of sensitivity for me, was also left very irritated. So that natural fragrance in this one really did not play nice with my skin. So I was very displeased with that. And another reason why this one is towards the bottom of the list, because I just simply will never buy this one again, it's an SPF 30 and it costs $42. For $42, I'd rather buy La Roche-Posay. I'd rather spend a few more dollars and get ultraviolet. I wouldn't reach for this one again. So that's why it's towards the bottom of the list. Texturally, it's very nice. It's hydrating. It leaves the skin with a nice glow. Not a bad sunscreen by any means in terms of texture. It's just those few little things that kind of put me off. And that's why I just won't buy it again. <laughs> Next we have the Neutrogena Ultra She Clear Face. This sunscreen is an SPF 30 and is supposed to be suitable for breakout prone skin. This one is described as having a water light texture and it's oil free and supposed to be suitable for breakout prone skin. And I will say that's pretty accurate for this one. It is definitely better for those with oily acne prone skin and it does have quite a nice lightweight texture. It did take some time to rub down, but once it did, it didn't leave any white cast on my skin. I didn't get any pilling. There wasn't any bad smell or greasy feeling or anything like that. And once it does dry down, you really can't feel this one on the skin at all. It is a completely mattifying sunscreen, which is pretty ideal for a lot of those with oily or acne prone skin. This one is priced at $12 for 88 mils, which isn't bad at all. It wasn't overall, it wasn't a bad sunscreen. I just think you can find something better for those with oily acne prone skin. I don't think this is your best option. And another thing regarding Neutrogena sunscreens, they tend to be quite harsh around the eye area especially. And I did find that with this one as well. I am always careful when applying sunscreen around the eye area because I don't want any of that to end up in the eye. That can be very, very irritating. But for whatever reason, Neutrogena sunscreens cause irritation without even ending up in the eye area. Just applying them around the eye area is enough to set off any, to set off the waterworks basically. So if you do have very sensitive eyes like that, I just recommend steering clear of any Neutrogena sunscreens because for whatever reason, they all seem to do that. <laughs> and a quick thing regarding eye irritation when it comes to chemical sunscreens, I don't think there's a single chemical sunscreen on this earth that won't irritate your eyes if it ends up inside your eye. Sunscreen shifts throughout the day and if you find that the sunscreen is running down into your eyes, a good tip is to take some translucent powder and set that sunscreen in place after you've applied it. And that way the sunscreen shouldn't move, it shouldn't budge and it won't end up in your eyes. And following on from that one, we've got another Neutrogena sunscreen. This one is the Ultra She Fluid SPF 50. This one is very clearly Neutrogena's attempt at an invisible fluid caliber sunscreen. It's a pretty good attempt. It's not bad by any means. It's just not quite as good <laughs> as invisible fluid. But I mean, Invisible Fluid set the bar up here, so not every sunscreen is going to meet that, unfortunately. This one is $20 for 40 mil of sunscreen, and if you're going to spend that much to get this one, you may as well spend 10 more dollars to get 10 more mils of La Roche-Posay Invisible Fluid. <laughs> but to speak to the pros of this sunscreen, yes, it is very nice and lightweight and takes no time at all to rub into the skin. You do need a moisturizer underneath it if you have dry or oily skin. This is not gonna be moisturizing enough for you on its own, but it's not designed to be anyway. Another point of comparison between this one and Invisible Fluid is that La Roche-Posay is fragrance-free, this one is not. So it dries down matte, it's got a powdery feeling to it, and it doesn't have any glow or anything like that, no hydration whatsoever. So if that's something you like in a sunscreen, then you may like this one but I personally like a more hydrating finish because I've got very dry skin. So something like this just isn't ideal for me. Okay, this is where it's gonna be a little bit tricky in terms of the ranking because literally the rest of the sunscreens I'm gonna mention are all really, really good sunscreens. It is just gonna be a matter of me nitpicking <laughs> and trying to place these in some sort of order. So that's just something to bear in mind. <laughs> So the next one I'm going to talk about is the QV Face Moisturizing Day Cream SPF 30. This one is at the bottom of that list of the really good ones because it is just an SPF 30 and SPF 50 is just better. <laughs> so why not go in with SPF 50? And I really only use this when I'm indoors all day and I know I'm not going to really be exposed to the sun the way I would if I was going out. 
and it is very moisturizing. Only those with real dry skin, I'd say, would be able to wear this one comfortably. If you have normal skin, oily skin, combo skin, I think this one really would be a little bit too heavy for you. It is QV though. QV makes amazing skincare for those with dry, sensitive, eczema prone skin. So if you do fall into one of those categories, you might find that this one is actually really ideal for your skin type. So that's something else to consider as well. Another thing to mention about this one is the price. It is about $22, I think, from Chemist Warehouse at 75 grams. There are cheaper options for more or the same amount of product that might be more comfortable to wear that have a higher SPF number. So those are all things to take into consideration. Next up on the list is the Nivea Shine Control. There are so many Nivea sunscreens out there and I am not about to attempt to try and review all of them, but this one specifically was mentioned quite a few times by a lot of you and a lot of you are really big fans of this one so of course i had to try it out and this one really was very nice it has a more creamy moisturizing texture it does leave my skin feeling really nice and hydrated but it does dry down quite a bit to a more matte finish so i do think this one could work for oily or combo skin as well as dry skin if you're someone with dry skin that doesn't necessarily like glowy finish to your skincare, then something like this might actually work really well for you. And on the flip side, if you have oily combo skin and you want a moisturizing but mattifying sunscreen, this is an option that you might want to consider. It's not fragrance free, but it does have a really nice smell to it. I really enjoy the smell of this product. It's very comfortable to wear. It has a lightweight lotion texture. It's a 50 ml bottle and this one is about $12. So a really great price and a really good quality sunscreen that would suit a variety of different skin types. Next up, we have Hawaiian Tropic Silk Hydration. This is a moisturizing sunscreen that would be suitable for those with dry skin. I don't think oily skin types would be able to enjoy this one very much at all. It does leave a really nice glowy look to the skin. And I think the best part about this sunscreen is the smell. It's very true to the name. It has a mango coconutty smell. It's a really nice, pleasant smell. It's not overpowering at all. I have a ridiculous amount of sunscreen and skincare in general, so I hand off a lot of it to my siblings. And I gave this one to my brother and he, he loves it. He loves it so much just because of the smell. It's his favorite thing that I've ever given him ever, which is <laughs> interesting, <laughs> but something to take into consideration. And another thing to take on board is the price. $16 for 100 mils. Great value, good quality sunscreen for dry skin. All right, next we have the Latan SPF 50 Sensitive Sunscreen. This one is fragrance free and it's described as being a lightweight formula and it also has some vitamin E in there as well. I really like this one and again, it is a moisturizing sunscreen that I think would only be suitable for those with drier skin. I think it's a little bit too moisturizing and a little bit too glowy for those with oilier skin. Remember, with my dry skin, my skin gives off no natural glow on its own. It needs to be given <laughs> that glow. With, without moisture, without hydration, my skin is dry and as matte as you can possibly imagine. That's why I gravitate towards those glowy finish sunscreens or that glowy finish moisturizer, because I really do need it, because my skin absolutely has no shine of its own. The dry down on this one is actually quite good though. It doesn't stay as glowy as it is as when you first apply it. It does dry down quite a bit and leaves you with a nice normal amount of glow. It does say on the packaging that it delivers a matte finish. I don't think that's accurate at all and fragrance free. So it's $10 for 70 ml, so really great value for this one. If you liked Bondi Sands Hydra but you want something that's even more affordable and a little bit lower on the glow meter, this one's your guy. Next, we have the Hamilton Everyday Face. This one reminds me a lot of the Cancer Council Face Day Wear Moisturizer. If you remember, I tried that one in my previous video. It has a really nice lightweight lotion texture that takes no time at all to rub into the skin and it sits very comfortably on the skin and it has a nice matte finish. So if you really like the Cancer Council one and you might wanna try a new sunscreen, I think you'll probably enjoy this one as well. It has a similar lightweight lotion feel. It rubs in really easily. If you have oilier skin and you want something with a matte finish and something that will act as a moisturizer and sunscreen in one, then this will be ideal for you. And it's $12 for 75 grams amazing value and really good quality product. People were literally upset at me in my last video when I did not mention this sunscreen. <laughs> and that's the Mecha Maxima to Safe Face 
SPF 50 plus sunscreen. I do have a bit of a story with this sunscreen and there's a reason I didn't mention it in my first sunscreen video. I'd actually already tried this one before back in January 2020. Remember that horrible summer we had where there was ash falling out of the sky the whole time? That was when I first tried this sunscreen. And I actually did have a really bad experience with this sunscreen. It really broke me out and there was no... There was nothing else that could have been breaking my skin out. For whatever reason, I had a really horrible cystic acne reaction to using this product. It could have been something else, I don't know, but all signs pointed to this sunscreen. So that's why I didn't mention it in my other video because what for? I hated it. Then I upload that video and everyone is asking, where is the Mecca sunscreen? Why have you not mentioned that sunscreen in this video? So if you're one of those people, here it is. I've come back and I've brought the Mecca sunscreen with me. And actually this one is reformulated. It's different to the one I tried back in January, 2020. This one is oxybenzone free. So whether it's the oxybenzone that really set everything off, who knows? But I had a really great time using this sunscreen. It's a good sunscreen, who knew? <laughs> This one is very much like a primer. It applies to the skin really nicely. It has a nice floral scent. It does have a little bit of a grip to it and that's because it was made to have makeup sit on top of it comfortably. It does dry down, I'd say to a satiny matte finish. So if you do prefer a more glowy sunscreen, then this one might not be ideal for you. As someone with dry skin, I did find that I had to layer a moisturizer underneath. This one was not moisturizing enough on its own for me. If you have oily skin, I think you'll be able to get away with this one just on its own. And another really good thing about this product is that it is a really high quality primer sunscreen and it's $40 for 75 grams. And another great thing about this product specifically is that you can buy it in a 30 gram tube for $30 to try it out and I really like that. So I hope you are all satisfied now that I have finally talked about Mecca to save face. Okay, next we have Keratin Sensi Care Face Cream SPF 50 Plus. This is a 75 ml tube for $7. $7. And this, and when I say this is a good sunscreen, <laughs> this is a really good sunscreen. It's described as having a moisturizing, silky texture, and that is very accurate. This one was also made with sensitive skin in mind. It's fragrance free. It has some nice hydrating, soothing ingredients. You've got glycerin, you've got bisabolol. I don't know if I've said that right. It's very moisturizing and it leaves the skin feeling very soft and with a really nice glow. This one is definitely better for those with dry skin, of course, and it doubles as your moisturizer and sunscreen in one. I don't even know this brand. I'd never heard of them before until I was browsing Chemist Warehouse looking for all of the sunscreens to review. But man, was this a find. And for $7, are you kidding me? What? Just amazing. Amazing. And coming in second place, I have the Natio Daily Defense Face Moisturizer SPF 50 Plus. This is another one that was very popular in the comment section of my previous sunscreen video. And I understand why. This is lovely. This is a great product, honestly. This one is labeled as face moisturizer and that's exactly what it is. It's a very moisturizing sunscreen, leaves the skin very hydrated. It's very comfortable on rubs in very easily, but it doesn't leave the skin looking too glowy. So I think that's what makes this one so great is that it's suitable for a bunch of skin types. So if you do have oily or combo skin and you want something that's moisturizing, but not too heavy on the skin and won't leave you looking too shiny, then this is the ideal sunscreen for you. Comes in a nice big tube. You've got hundred mils here for $20, which is great. And of course, it's also good for those with dry skin that want something that won't leave them looking too glowy or shiny. Because I understand not everyone's like me, not everyone wants the glow. Some people want to keep things <laughs> understated. And this is a sunscreen for you if that's exactly what you want. Coming in first place, Naked Sundays Collagen Glow Cream SPF 50+. If you're a regular viewer of mine, you've already heard me mention this one a couple of times. I've already mentioned it on Instagram, on TikTok. I am a big fan <laughs> of this sunscreen and that's why I've got it in first place for today's video. It's lovely. It's really just such a joy to wear this sunscreen. I I really, I really like this one. Not sure if you can tell, <laughs> but I really like this one. And it's described as a glow cream, which means it leaves the skin with a very nice glow. And 
I love that. I love a glow. Another thing this sunscreen does that makes me love it so much is it really makes my skin feel so nice and soft. My skin always just feels amazing when I'm wearing this product. I just really, really enjoy it. It's described as a four in one primer, sunscreen and collagen moisturizer. It, yes, it does sit very nicely underneath makeup. If you like something very moisturizing under your makeup, then you'll love this. It's got collagen in there. Collagen is a great humectant and it also has some watermelon extracts in there for an added antioxidant boost. Of course, this one is suitable for those with drier skin, oilier combo skin. I don't think you'd be able to handle this one too well at all. And this one is only available at the Naked Sundays website and it's $35 for 50 mil. So very reasonably priced really really good product and that's that those are the 15 or so sunscreens for today if you have any other sunscreens that i haven't talked about yet between this one and my previous sunscreen video please do let me know i don't think i'm going to make a part three but i might include it in some of my other content maybe i'll review it on instagram who knows but please do let me know if there are still some sunscreens out there that i should check out if you enjoyed this video please do give it a big thumbs up Please make sure you subscribe. I am very sorry about the lighting change. I am currently experiencing really good thing that I'm at the end of the video, <laughs> but I really hope it didn't disturb your viewing experience too much. But yeah, that's that. That's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.